blank stone. In Jesus' day, this was your get-out-of-jail-free card. <laughs> when they let people out of prison or when they were freed from slavery, they were given a white stone. And there was nothing written upon it. And they were allowed to write a new name for themselves upon it. It's part of a, a ritual that they had in their day. And it was referred to in the book of Revelations. John wrote, To the one who overcomes, I am giving spiritual manna. And it will also provide a white stone upon which a new name will be written that no one knows except for the one who receives it. Spiritual food, spiritual manna, that's that one day at a time spiritual sustenance that you will need to get through this coming year. Take a moment and think about this last year. This last year has been a year of overcoming. And he writes here, to the one who overcomes, I will give this spiritual food. And you have made an overcoming this year. Now, this year may have been a year that had many triumphs, and you can reflect on those. Even if this is a year that you found difficult, there were times of triumph. And even if this was a year when you felt like you got everything the way you wanted it, there were also overcomings. There were difficult times, and you made a great overcoming in some area of your life. And because you've made that overcoming this past year, you're being given the spiritual sustenance, the food that will get you through the next year. Your diligence, your commitment to your spiritual path has opened this up for you. But not only do you receive that spiritual food, it says, but you receive something else, a white stone. And we have the ceremony simply to symbolize the fact that we start over. It's a clean slate. It's a symbol of the fact that in this now moment, any and all possibilities are available to each one of us. And so, just reflect on the fact that this stone has nothing written upon it, and that you're going to write, maybe not your name upon it, but something that identifies your next step in the journey. The word name comes from the Sanskrit naman, which is uh, literally identity. And so it's your spiritual identity. And you know, if you read the Old Testament or the New Testament, there are dozens and dozens of cases of people who went through a big transition in their life and then they received a new name. Um, Jacob became Israel and Sarai became Sarah and Abram became Abraham. And in the New Testament, you've got, um, you've got uh, 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 Paul, who was Saul earlier, or Peter, who was, um, was Cephas uh, before that. And every one of these names symbolizes something, without turning this into a Bible lesson, if you go and look at what the new name means, it talks about the journey that they were going to walk and all of the accomplishments they were about to make. Now, usually I, I don't receive a name. Usually I receive something like love or enlightenment or peace of mind or oneness or something that is not a name but a quality, a spiritual symbol for that which is coming. And I invite you to be open to whatever it is, because sometimes it, um, sometimes it's, it's completely surprising. Every year I talk about the woman who received the, the cursive L because it was so powerful. It looked like Laverne of Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> she said she didn't understand it because she'd just been diagnosed with cancer and she wanted something like healing, and here comes this L. She didn't know what it was, but I didn't know who she was. She called the office to give away her house because in March she was diagnosed with the fourth stage of cancer and they gave her a few weeks to live and she didn't know anybody, really had no close relatives and had no close friends and was going to leave her house to the church. And she was new to the church. Well, I said, well, why, why don't we try plan B here? You know, I, uh, let's, let's see if we can work with this. Well, it, you know, as often happens, when you set foot on a spiritual path, everything comes up to meet you, which is unlike what it is you intend. So she lost her medical insurance, or found out her doctor wasn't covered, and she wasn't allowed to get any more medical attention until September. So from March to September, she just had her spiritual work, her spiritual work. During that time, she realized what the L meant. Uh, it didn't just mean one thing. It meant love. She didn't love herself. She needed to heal herself with the power of love. Live. You know, she had given up on life. She's, she felt, no, I've, I've, got, I've got something to live for. Laugh. She, she found that the enjoyment and the sacred uh, upliftment of life was, was something she'd been missing. And, of course, she realized at the very beginning her name was Lucy, so there was an L for that, too. 
And when she finally got her medical insurance and her doctors, and there's all kinds of story to it, but she finally got wheeled in for surgery, they found nothing. She, she actually, she was wheeled in, and she sang, Use Me, the song that we sang, and she said they thought I was crazy, but, but they opened her up, there was nothing there. She was totally healed, and she didn't leave her house to the church. She had her healing. Now, so you, my point being that you may receive something in your sacred uh, stone, your white stone, that's not what you had in mind. Go with it. Move with it. You know, let go of your performance anxiety. Let go of your conscious mind. Be playful. Be playful. And she was playful when she received it. I mean, you have to be to receive an answer like that. So what can you do to open up to it? Be open, receptive, and move with it. And if it comes now, great. If it comes later, great. If it already came to you, great. Be open to it changing. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Every year for the last 20 years, Lynn has been leading this ceremony in the churches that we've served. And she has a sense of this. She's had so many people share their yearnings of their heart, their awareness, their, 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 the experience of this wonderful, this wonderful word. And that's how we learned Lucy's story, is that she sent that to Lynn in an email. But she's kind of taken all this in and kind of wrapped it all together. And she's kind of like the, the, the tour guide of this experience. And so I, I, I want to, us to be open to what she has to say. She always leads us in such a beautiful way. And I always get to receive my word under her guidance. And so I feel privileged and blessed that way too. So I'd like to invite Lynn to... Happy New Year! Happy, Happy New Year. Year! So this is always a fun <coughs> time of year. New energy new calendars, new everything, right, and, and new steps that we can take for ourselves. And I always like to emphasize that that this is not a magical service. There's nothing that, that I'm doing differently except getting up earlier one Sunday out of the year, you know, and that's no big deal. But there's, nothing, there's no magic dust that we're going to be sprinkling on you today. We actually use that on the tree on the <laughs> scene the life service, so it's all gone. So what you are here today to get out of this is already inside of you. You brought it here today with you. I'm not giving it to you. Greg didn't give it to you. The meditation helped open you to up to that within yourself, within your heart. You brought it with you. That is your divine self speaking in and through you today and every day. Every day. As I was meditating on this service this week, I was thinking, what is it? I always like to kind of get a theme going, right? You know, what's a theme? Sometimes it's guidance. But this year it was love. It's love. For the consciousness of our church, this is a year of love. And how do we, how do we get in touch with that love? And I was being reminded of this experience I had 20 years ago that I hardly ever even think about, um, except for this week, actually. And I was, um, years ago when I was a teenager, I was one of the international officers of the Youth of Unity, which is our Unity's teenage youth group. It's called the Youth of Unity, or YOU, and a um, beautiful experience of my life. Well, a few years later, after I was married and doing my own thing, I was called with some of the other officers back to a Youth of Unity conference, which is their big gathering once a year in the summertime with you know, several hundred teenagers uh, from Unities all around the world. And they said, we want you to come and speak. You know, with these other officers, former officers, we want you to speak. And our topic is, how do you take that feeling of that week home? What do you do to do that? And anybody who's ever been at a Youth of Unity conference knew that you go there, there's this beautiful feeling of love and acceptance, unconditional love, unconditional acceptance. And, you know, when you're coming from different high schools and different areas and different families, that feels really good, right? But then the week is over and you go back home to those high schools and those families and what do you do? You know, I remember going back home and my, my family was great, but I was always cranky because it's not you know, 400 other people loving and accepting me 24 hours a day, right? <laughs> so so how, how do we take that feeling home? And so what I shared with them <coughs> during that time is, and it was an experience of getting in touch with that love that is right there with them. My mom was a Youth of Unity sponsor, one of the adult leaders, 
and she one year when she was at the YOU conference, she spoke to one of the employees, and and the employee, this person said to her, "These kids, they think it's here. They think it's Unity Village, and it's some big deal here, but it's not. They bring it with them. They bring that energy. They generate it. They vibrate it, and and then they go home, and we're all like, oh." Yeah. It's gone. <laughs> so it's not anything magical about anything. It's about what we are bringing to us. So, so I worked with the, the YOUers in that workshop, and I said, let's, let's get an experience of love, and let's turn to our neighbors and just hold them, just hug them. You know, we were always end up hugs and warm fuzzies, we call them, right? So, so they, they turned to their neighbor, and they just held that person. And I said, let's feel the feelings of that. Feel the physical sensation, the arms around you, the warmth of their bodies, and, and feel the energy of love and that acceptance coming back and forth between you. Just feel that energy. And then we kind of wrap that up. And then I talked about a little something else just to kind of give us a break from that. And I said, let's go back to that. Except this time, don't touch the person next to you. I want you to close your eyes and experience, re-experience that experience that you had with the person sitting next to you. Feel the physical sensations through your recollection, through your imagination. Feel it. Feel what it is. Feel that energy that you shared between you. And everybody was able to re-experience that love that they had shared together. So we talked more about how that is now a permanent part of who they are. That's a permanent part of them. And so I want to share a little bit of that with you today, but I'm not going to ask you to hold your neighbors. I know that we're bringing some of our new people out, so we're not going to do that. We had our hugging time. But I want you to think about a time where you felt that unconditional love, whether you were giving it or receiving it. When did you feel that? Perhaps it's with a, in a relationship. Perhaps it's with while well, you were holding a baby or being with your pet. There's so much love there. Or maybe it was a time when you had accomplished something, pushed through something that was very difficult and got to the other side and just felt a, a release and, and a love for yourself, for, for the courage and the, the perseverance it took to move through that, whatever that is, just to get in touch with that right now. And recall it. It's part of who you are, so it's there. It's, al it's already there. It's not going to leave you. It's part of who you are, that experience of, of tangible, unconditional love. And remember what the physical sensations of that felt like. If you were holding a baby, what that baby felt like in your arms, if you were cuddling with a pet, holding somebody in a relationship, feeling that sense of love and gratitude for yourself. How did that show up in your body? Our body is a beautiful place for stored memories. And now remember how it felt. Not necessarily the emotions of it, but the energy of it. What was that energy like? Feel how it felt, how it flowed within you. Maybe it flowed to another person or an animal.
And finally, remember how the world looked differently during that moment of love, of unconditional love. Maybe the world felt like there was more light in those moments. Maybe your future looked brighter, maybe. There is a sense of deep, deep peace. Notice how easily you can pull that forth. And even if you can't, try this another time to pull that forth, that memory of that pure love. This is part of you. This is the love that has no measuring stick. This is the love that has more power than the shirts and the negative voice in our head. It's more accurate. It's more permanent. It is our identity. Experience that that memory that has become our present moment. Bring that with you to this room, to this sanctuary of, of love. And just bring that experience to this present moment. We take a deep breath and breathe it in. So this identity that we are calling forth today is as real to us, as much already a part of us, and even more so than that experience we just recalled. This is love. This is our identity. We feel that love from one another. Each individually generating love and collectively experiencing that love. In unity we say God is love and God is inside of us. So this is what we're talking about. And now in this space, allow your word to come forth from that place of love. And remember to not worry if it doesn't show up for you right now. It's there. It's already part of you, who you are. How could it not exist. And when you're ready, take your pencils and write it on your stone. Pencil works better than pen. And go with that first thing that comes up. Honor it with your love, your awareness, your commitment.
And what an honor to be in the presence of these souls here today, of each other. Willing to call forth that love. Willing to generate it and to share it with one another. Multiplying that love exponentially. Unconditional love has no end. Paramahansa Yogananda said that that God is an energy, an experience whose center is everywhere and circumference nowhere. experience. Maybe take a breath. Let it out. Feel those people by your side. And open your eyes when you're ready. And you have your assignment for 2016. A new something a new something that's going to come into your lives. And your only job now is to acknowledge it every day. Put your stone somewhere you, where you can see it. My first year, I stuck it in my sock drawer all year. And it happened anyway. So now I know better. I just keep it out. I can see it. And commit to it every day. Commit to tapping into that love that now you can't deny. You can't deny that because that did not come from me. That came from you, from your own experience of unconditional love. You have that and even more, even more within you because that's who we are. We're not, we're, not here to, we're not here to do things in the world, although that's part of our spiritual responsibility. But we're here to expand that love. And through the things that we do, we have the opportunity to learn how to expand that love. And that's the direction it goes. It doesn't, we don't go, well, only when I accomplish this, I will then have more love. Only when I have this relationship, I will have more love. I can tell you, Greg loves me very much. I know it, I feel it. But if I'm talking trash to myself in my head all day, it doesn't make any difference how much he loves me. I'm not feeling it. I can't feel it. My job in our relationship, my job in any relationship, is to get in touch with that love within myself so that then I can let that flow go back and forth more freely. Love doesn't have a measuring stick. You don't have to run for president to have that love, although this year... <laughs> <laughs> love is always there unconditional loving you loving you loving you loving you and and being love as you it's kind of not anything we can really describe or put our fingers on it's it's a love that we that we feel it's a love that we give it's a love that we receive but it's also a love <coughs> that we are it's a love that we are so we we embrace all those experiences in, in 2016 those those successes and those failures and those learning moments um, last night I was making sweet potato fries with my new vegetable spiralizer that I got for Christmas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pulled them out of the oven, burnt to a crisp. <laughs> my first thought in my head was, I really wasn't hungry for those anyway. I just had to use them up from Christmas. 
my second thought was, and I said it out loud, I said, hooray, the first failure of 2016. <laughs> and my son, who was playing nearby, said, oh, mom, it's okay. I said, no, this is great, because now I know how not to do it. <laughs> so we embrace all our experiences in 2016, and we say thank you, God, for all the opportunities coming forward for us to learn and to grow and to learn how to express more and more and more of love. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And now take a deep breath and let it out. And take a moment to get in touch with your white stone that you received as you came in. Just get it into your hands, set aside all your papers. I want you to really focus on this white stone. So take another deep breath and let it out. And realize that this white stone is a blank slate. It is that upon which the words of your soul will be written. It's a new possibility that you hold within your beingness. And so just realize that in order to receive, you must give forth. So give forth and let go of all your thoughts. Just let them go. Let go of all your feelings. Release them. And let go of all your physical awareness. And join with me in a visualization, a meditation that is there to quiet your mind and open your emotions to receive. Imagine a body of water that represents your mind. It's totally still. and it perfectly reflects that which is above. Become aware that on the surface there is not a ripple. And that your mind perfectly reflects that which is above the higher reality of your being. And just get in touch with the sense that your mind is calm. Still. Like glass. And notice with every detail the mirrored surface reflecting the sky. When your mind wanders, just bring it back to seeing this reflection. And notice that as you look deep within the water, your emotions are calm and pure, and still and clear. Still body, still mind, still feelings, and just be aware of the perfect reflection of that higher reality. And now, without necessarily being aware of what that white stone word is, know that spiritually you're receiving it like the tiny pebble that's dropped into this still water that ripples out. You see this now rippling out. 
And you know that into the depths of your beingness you are receiving it. The water turns to stillness once again. And you know that within your being has been implanted that which you've needed to receive. And just be grateful in this now moment. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now we prepare for our time of offering. And our offering statement this morning is, I give in honor of my new potential and I receive abundantly. Together. I give in honor of my new potential and I receive abundantly. And silently. And again aloud together. I give in honor of my new potential, and I receive abundantly, and so it is. Amen.